welcome you aboard. This non-stop service to Beijing is approximately 3 hours and 15 minutes. The sky is looking clear today, so we're expecting a smooth sailing ride. Enjoy your journey, and thank you for choosing our airline. Cabin crew, prepare for takeoff. And we'll meet you back in the crossover studio in Beijing. Xiaojin, I'll meet you there. Off we go. And welcome to this edition of Crossover. I'm Ji Xiaojun. Louisa, I guess, is still flying her plane. No, actually, here she is. I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> Hello, welcome back, <laughs> Captain you. Louisa. Yes, yes. Hello, Captain. <laughs> Hello, Louisa. So, seriously? No, no, I can't. I, you know, I can't take the credit for it. I, I, you know, I flew back, but I was a passenger. <laughs> you did fly back. <laughs> yeah, I did fly back. Today we're talking about aviation. Aviation is the key. We're trying to talk about the um, industry yes. in the future in China. And today in the studio we're joined by two captains and one first officer. Welcome to Crossover. Welcome to Crossover. This, this is for real, yeah, right? Is for real. <laughs> we have uh, Captain Chen Ao from, from China Eastern. From China Eastern. Okay, welcome. We have Julie. Julie. First officer. Yeah, from Silver Airways. And we have Captain Chan. Miller. From, uh, where from? I'm from Shanghai. From yeah. Shanghai. Yeah. When we say aviation industry, what are the terms that we need to clarify before anything could happen? We have, uh, like, uh, military. And we have and civil. Aviation. Civil aviation. Can you kind of describe to us the differences? When you talk about airspace, it's the space that airplanes are operating in, right? And we have different names and rules and regulations for each different airspace. A lot of airspace is related to the airports that they serve. Then if you're talking about aviation, like civil aviation, mm. well, it's easy just to think of, well, it's the airlines, right? Yeah. The military. Then everything that's not military and not airlines is general aviation. General aviation, there's, there's so many applications for general aviation. It starts with uh, just the private pilot that wants to fly himself and his family around. See. It could be the search and rescue, uh, life flight, right? Fire uh, suppressant operations. So, I mean, there's a... There's a flight training. Flight, flight training, training is certainly yeah. general tourism? aviation. Would that fall under Air tourism? charter right. And tourism. also agriculture no, as well. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And the fishery, mm -hmm. forestry. Sightseeing. Mm. Yeah. 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 Agriculture. Yeah. Science. So that's all the uh, yeah. under general, general mm -hmm. aviation. General aviation yeah. For all these different types of aviation and airspace requirement, are, are there any differences? Say, I mean, how high can they fly? naturally separated by the aircraft performance. Mm -hmm. So most general aviation, uh, general aviation aircraft doesn't fly that high. And for the commercial um, aviation like airlines, the aircraft have a high performance. They can fly high. That's 10,000? 10, 10, yeah, usually high. it's about 21,000 to 41, okay. 49,000 feet. Feet, okay. Yeah, we yeah. use feet. Uh, here well, more, than, later, yeah. more than jet. The altitude is based on the aircraft performance and mm. the oxygen supply. For the general aviation aircraft, we talk about uh, three aircraft, uh, no, small aircraft. Yeah. Mm. Small aircraft, they, they, they can also fly very high, but mm. the human needs oxygen at that altitude. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So they usually stay below uh, 10,000 feet. So they give an airspace a certain dimension, yeah. vertically and laterally. And then for that airspace, if you're going to operate in it, the aircraft and the pilot has to meet certain requirements. And then for training, like for flight training, most flight training is done in what we call a normally aspirated engine. So it, it needs air and oxygen to breathe. The engine yep. does. And the air gets thin when you get higher. So as you climb, there's a service ceiling. When we say there is going to be an ease or the airspace management, mm -hmm. I mean, what does it mean to the public? Mm -hmm. Is it possible that maybe one day we might also get a license and fly our own plane? Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Are, are we getting that, it? Is that's it happening? part of it, right? I mean, yeah. you're, you're going to need airports and you're going to need aircraft, right. and they need to have the airspace available to them, right? So the the easing of the restrictions of airspace is going to allow for that access to airspace at, at a lower altitude for having a fun flight to go 
have a hamburger somewhere down the road, right? Well, that's called life. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you fly a plane out and get hamburger and come back. Yeah, you know? I mean, you're in, you're in Beijing. Maybe you want to fly to another province and have Sichuan or you yeah. want Hunan or something, yeah. Yeah. a different style of food. You can go right there to the source. Yeah, no traffic right. congestion yeah. on the way in the air. Yeah. I mean, yeah. air, air, in the space, but the, at the same time, once, once you land, that's yeah. still going to be the problem of the <laughs> traffic. <laughs> yeah. This is pretty much what we talked about and what is already happening a lot in the United States. Sure. Actually, there is a lot of different kind of communities. Like I'm living in the golf community and some people living in the yacht community and somebody can, living can, in the air park community. Park, you can park oh, your right. plane or your the, boat. Yeah, they have yeah. different uh, theme to tie the same kind of people together to be the neighbors and yeah. enjoy the the thing they like, the common thing. There is a pretext, though. You, you need to have a plane to be in yeah. that community. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. have a hangar. Fact, the last time I was home, I went and visited a, a good friend of mine. He's a captain. He lives in a community that right in the middle of the houses, there's an airstrip. It's an unimproved grass airstrip. And he's got a hangar out the back of his driveway, and he's got his toys in his hangar. So... Yep. Anytime he wants to go fly, he can go get in his airplane, taxi it out to the runway, and take off. It sounds like so easy. Yeah, but so the well, aviation industry here in China is developing really fast. Yeah. So I think there is a potential, huge it's, potential here. But this is pretty much, I mean, it takes time, right? I mean, at, at least and people need to know more about the aviation industry, yeah. and there's, there needs to be uh, the soil for aviation culture right. and for the, for the kids. I guess, I mean, the aviation, you said air park? Or yeah, air park. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, well, and we need a place like that for at least for the younger generation to be there, to, to get interested in what might be happening with the industry, right? Yeah. yeah participate. Yeah. How, how did you get interested first? Yeah. Back in 1990s, uh, aviation is, uh, was something very far away from uh, ordinary life. Yeah. Only very few people had the experience of traveling by air. Uh. So being a pilot was not an option for me at that time. Not a good profession? Uh, we don't even know there's a profession ah, right. as a pilot. We never heard about uh, civil aviation flying mm -hmm. college uh, before until I saw the recruiting poster in our school. Yeah, uh, uh, high school. High school. Yeah, that's, high school. that's almost mm -hmm. what happened, right, in, in, in China. Yeah. In the U.S., you have a lot of aviation museum, mm. you have um, these tours, you have this residential park. And now here in China, it seems like we're also moving towards that direction. Mm. We made a video of children okay. going to the museum, right. so let's take a look. Take a look. It's, it's some kids visiting a museum in, in the aviation university. Future pilots, maybe. Yeah, yeah. All about, yeah. But are they too young to understand? No, that could be a big influence for them. And yeah. actually, I got that influence when I was a little girl. All right. Yeah. How did that happen? I grew up in the uh, aerospace engineering uh, focused university in China, Harbin Institute of Technology University. Right, the so famous my parents, university. Yeah, my parents and their colleagues were aerospace professors or teachers. So surrounding in that area, I always had never end of my imagining of the universe. So who, so who knows is going to blossom in the future sometime. Yes, yes. You know, here we have a first officer sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> a small seed you plant today exactly. will turn into a big tree tomorrow. Uh, yeah. You never know. You just never look know. at the um, our first yeah. woman astronaut. She's so young. Just, just imagine her story. 
when she was little, right? It must be something, a, a um, similar, you know, experience yeah, similar experience like that. Similar experience, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And to me, I see that as that's the new culture coming up in this country, right? You can build all the air airports and buy all the airplanes, but you still need that that young person to have that ambition to even know that it's available to them as a future yeah. option, yeah. right? Uh, I've been to high schools, and uh, I've seen how students interact when they see a, a you know a professional pilot, and their their reaction is, oh, that's not for me. It's that's impossible, almost. They think it's just out of reach. But if you take a young child and expose them to aviation so young, they grow up, and that influence is with them, and even influencing the people around them as well. So. When they get older and they need to make a, a decision about what they want to do with their life, with their career, mm -hmm. it's already planted. That yeah. seed is yep. there. We'll have to give it time in, in China because, I mean, maybe in the United States, it's been there for decades already. Well, in China, it's almost about to yeah. start, right? Well, and I would say yeah. The, yeah. what China's aviation industry has done in the last few years, ha if they keep at this pace, they'll be there soon. Uh, how Different to Phil. I mean, the one since you. Well, I've been here. No, the GA has. I would wish it would grow faster because we have talked about opening airspace up and yeah. and uh, making it available. But I also know that there's a lot of moving parts in this system that have to all come together. So it's, it can't just be done overnight. And also talk about the aero park. You can't just build the aero park there. It's isolated without other facility and airspace uh, sources, ATC. Mm -hmm. So it's have to develop balancely and equally together. It's a big system together mm -hmm. to, to develop. They say in the next 10 years, you'll need 5,000 pilots a year for the next 10 years. Um, for commercial airlines? Or? Pilots in general, I guess. It's not necessarily a shortage. It's that the airline industry here is growing so fast. Mm. So they just need those pilots. They need more and more pilots because the airlines... Here in China, are, they're adding more routes. They're flying to new countries. They're they're expanding their operations. And people can afford to fly now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, more yeah. yeah, more planes. So Asia in general, but specifically China, is one of the biggest buyer. Is the biggest buyer of aircraft, Airbus and Boeing's, and their own aircraft now. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what's fueling the demand for the the pilots. Now, anyway, I mean, actually, there are lots of uh, training schools or flying schools in operation these days. In, in, in Beijing, in your other, ma other major cities, and we're going to take a break first, and when we come back, we're going to show you a video clip of showing two potential pilots in the making trying very hard to learn to how to fly a plane. Well, we'll be right back. And for more information about Crossover, you can like us and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Welcome back to Crossover. Yes, and here we're here at the base. Are we seriously doing this? I think we're supposed to do this. We're supposed to take the <laughs> challenge out to the sky. Well, nice clear sky though today. Um, yes. Are we flying as a two pilots or well, I trust two you, passengers? But I, don't, I don't trust you that much. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, not as a pilot, definitely not as a pilot. We are, we're, we'll be flying the planes as a passenger. We have a professional pilot, William, join us. Hello, William. Hello. Now, just one question, William. Out of all these planes, which one are we flying today? Um, that one. This one? Yeah. Good. <laughs> That's <laughs> good news. Cause that's the biggest plane. Two engines, right? <laughs> All right, we have two engines over there. So, uh, are you ready? I guess we're both really doing this. Yeah. I'm scared, petrified, apprehensive about this whole thing. Very excited. <laughs> excited. You're excited. I'm just nervous. Now, William, how many how many seats do we have here? Uh, four seats. Four seats. seats. So, right. um, you're gonna take the front one. Yeah. I'll go in the back and I'll try to sleep it off. You take two seats. I'm just gonna close my eyes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Right, let's go. Hey, Louisa. Yeah. Good luck. Oh, good luck. Safe flight. Safe flight. Okay, I'm 
make sure my door is closed. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta make sure it's closed. Okay, we gotta put this on, yeah, so we can yeah. hear, we can talk. Okay. Yes, finally, finally, we did it. I was so happy we were back on the ground. That was my first time, first time ever. Same here, in a yeah. small aircraft. Yeah, you want to do it again? Not really, but um, I think this plane you, is waiting you, for us. Are you, are you saying with this one you would like to do it again? Maybe we're out to try, right? It means Seriously? <laughs> and William, there's a, there's a three-seater. Okay, yeah, um, you do it. I'm... Actually, I'm going to go back with you too. <laughs> All right, see you back, see you back in the and welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. I'm glad to be back. So, <laughs> what, what do you think? <laughs> oh what you, I didn't see that before. You know, I am, I am afraid of heights. And um, you know, you, I you seem seemed so right. calm. You seemed so calm. I wasn't. She was I, not like that. No, 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 we I were, we were taxiing. We're, we're not flying, okay? We're not. <laughs> and I was telling the pilot not to do, do anything too extreme. Yeah. But from the video, yeah. I have to say, I'm the brave one. Yeah, you seem to be <laughs> seem okay. Yeah. 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 Editing is Quite you know, the <laughs> worst <laughs> thing. Editing is the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we had two cameras. How come yeah. the, the video was... You know why you had the camera in front of you, that's yeah. why. People couldn't see I was screaming in, in the back. Yeah, what I'm, what I'm saying is... I saw is, a little self-made turbulence that you were adding to the back of his chair. <laughs> I was actually trying to grab onto his chair. I was scared. I wanted to grab onto something, you know? Yeah, yeah. she wanted to hold someone yeah, or something. Yeah, I wanted something. to hold someone or something. Yeah, you know, in the car, you at least can hold onto right over there. Yeah. This is I mean, really the first flight, first time flight of small plane, right? Yeah, yeah. my oh. smallest one. I mean, before that is a 33-seater. But it was a commercial airline anyway, at, Big the, at the same time. And it's yeah. not only really about yeah. the flying, and that is, it's about the, the <clears throat> steep turn that he did. It was 60 degrees, yeah. and then he did the climb and the descent. This is nothing, right, compared this, to this the real process. This would be like what we call in the States a, a discovery flight, and we were talking yeah. about this mm -hmm. earlier. So um, people come out to the airport, airport where there's a flight school, and they take a 30-minute flight. It's mm -hmm. called a discovery flight. And the pilot will take the, the person and maybe another passenger and show them what it's like to fly in a small airplane. Mm -hmm. You were put to a test because normally those first discovery flights, it, it's, nice it's and very slow. smooth it's nice and slow. everything oh, shallow, nice banking. Right. So this is yeah. for the more, um, this is like intermediate level, right? Yeah. Okay. You could say it that way. Yeah. <laughs> so how was the experience yeah. for you guys? Can find, a, find, find out some nice ways yeah. to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, yeah. the pilot wants to say, you guys not welcome into the aviation. Yeah. <laughs> scare yeah. you first. Just yeah. scare you away. Yeah. Yeah. A little trick. That when, yeah. when I saw you lift up like that, that's a negative G. So he yeah. was yeah. pushing the nose over yeah. a little bit right. more aggressive, yeah. not yeah. smooth. Yeah. I'm sure usually it was just to get that no. feeling. For usually, how the much pilot. they dive? How much did they dive down? The pilot said the normally it's 200 meters, mm. but that day we did only like 560 meters. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that, so was, that was actually yeah. quite scary already. Yeah. All right, let's take a break first and come back. We'll continue our discussion as to what makes a good pilot. And to learn more about Crossover, check out the links below. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Crossover as we continue to talk about the aviation industry here in China. 
our topic for this segment is what makes a uh, pilot and yeah. what does it take to be a pilot? Um, we mentioned earlier actually, Cheng Ao, it was in high school, you know, it's a very strict process. That's the, my impression too because it also happened. Uh, when I was in my high school and a bunch of people just came in to the school and say, it's, you know, they're here recruiting future pilots, say, and then you have to be extremely healthy. We have a regulation uh, called the CCAR 67, and which uh, um, defines all the criteria for the physical standards. I was trying to be a police officer, right? And uh, I saw the recruiting poster and I thought uh, that was a great opportunity for me yeah. to make sure I'm physically fit or suit uh -huh. a police You officer. wanted to have so a medical to, check. He just wanted to <laughs> have a medical check. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, yeah. didn't apply at all. Is <laughs> <laughs> yes, I applied, I applied for that because yeah. I heard that uh, physical examinations are, are extremely strict. Yeah. Uh, they were actually. Mm. But, and, uh, some even say you, uh, you cannot have any scars on your skin. Oh, that's and, what I heard. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You heard too? And I had some scars, so I, I, I didn't think I could pass. Yeah. But eventually, uh, that's a rumor, actually. Uh -huh. so. That's for astronauts. Maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can ask him, Mr. Yang Li Wei someday. Yeah, maybe, maybe one day. So is it the same uh, thing we're talking about? It's very different than in the U.S. Oh. So, yeah, there's some differences there. But scars and tattoos can be a disqualifier here in really? China. Yeah. Mm. And, of course, there's a lot of aviators in America with tattoos, oh, with tattoos and yeah. possibly scars that still pass the medical. Yeah, but how, I, is it easier in the United States? I have no chance to be a pilot in China. I am near sight eyes. So you didn't pass the score here. So I you didn't pass the exam <laughs> over here. So yeah, why not the United States? You know, it's easier there, right? Yeah, yeah, I picked my dream. I want to be a pilot. So See. in the United States, I make my dream real. And talk about tattoo, actually not allowed to have Some tattoo. Some of them, yeah. my, my airline, you know, my company, not allowed to have mm. tattoo. Yeah. How come the requirements could be so different in uh, different countries? Mm. In China, we want okay. the best. Mm. We want the best. In the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst? <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Okay. It's just stricter in terms of rules and then um, regulations, yeah. I guess. Yes, and in the past, uh, most of the pilots don't pay for their own training. Mm -hmm. So that's why they are picked so restrictedly. Mm -hmm. That's Strictly. a good way it's, to say it. Yeah. We've talked about it. It's based kind of on the military examination. Oh, right. there, there is that military uh, cor correlation there. So, and, and they've got a lot more applicants in the pool so they can be more narrow, more selective, right? Mm. So they keep standards very high. The eyesight, uh, it's a very, very uh, important, right? They have a high standard for, a high, for, for eyesight. The height, even the height, I think yeah. it's uh, 170 to 180. Uh, 165. A, 165 I, I, and yeah. up. And so in the U.S., they don't, you could be short or very tall, you're still going to qualify. So there's, mm -hmm. here in China, the, there are some differences, but I, you got to look at the culture too. There's so many people here that could be applying and they're using a military standard, so it's a little bit more difficult to pass. Yeah. Well, talking about military standards, we have a video, right, yeah. about this. Let's take, take a look. look. 我们的民航飞行员培养基本上是准军事化的，因为现代的这个飞行器啊，有越来越安全可靠。这个时候，人为因素就成为航空事故的一个主要因素，而且基本上人为因素是目前来讲最大的一个影响因素。所以对飞行
Actually, uh, in the United States, the general aviation developed so mature, so it became very independent, and they realized something is necessary, something not in, not necessary, something more important than ice. Mm -hmm. So they have the start to have the new requirement. They don't want to close the door for the smart people because of the ice, mm -hmm. but they have the high standard. You have to meet the standard by yourself. Mm -hmm. We don't train you, but if you have this dream, you meet the standard. Will come. If it's for your own pleasure, say yeah. you want to become a pilot and just fly yourself, yeah. are those requirements just as strict? I mean, they have different requirements. So you just fly for fun for yourself. You could just have a third class medical. Yeah, mm -hmm. good enough. But in training is equally strict, right? Up through commercial level is very standardized. Yeah, I would even say internationally. Um, we're following standards mm. to teach how to fly an airplane. Yeah. Uh, how many flying hours are we talking about now before they can even fly a plane? I think or different country, different. To get a private pilot license, you need at least 40 hours of flight 40 experience. Hours. Yeah. Uh -huh. they, um, even in the U.S. and the West, they set a, um, a minimum hour requirement. But the yeah. skill level to reach proficiency and skill and to become a safe pilot Typically, right now in the U.S., the average is about 90 hours. How about mm. commercial pilot? How, like an airline pilot, how many hours do you need? Just for the commercial yeah. pilot license, mm. the, the regs say 250 hours. Yeah. If you want to work for an airline, for an airline, airline it's, it's 1,500 hours. Mm. Yeah. A pilot from the flying school uh, graduated will be uh, 200. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. a base to start, and they will take more than a year to move to a first officer position. For that 250 years, and how many hours are actually spending, uh, spent in, in landing? How many hours, say, in taking off? How many hours in dealing with any emergencies? <laughs> or I don't know, I mean, Hopefully okay. Hopefully you, you have a takeoff and a landing on every flight, right? Uh, <laughs> yes, well, I guess. <laughs> I hope you Just have the same off. number of no landings landing. as you have takeoffs. Yeah. So, yeah, you're, every if flight... If not, you're, then there's going to be a problem, right? <laughs> yeah. no, not actually, them, actually. Yeah. Uh, in the airlines, sometimes the first officer uh, did the takeoff, but the captain did the uh, uh, so uh, landing because right. the okay. weather or, yeah. you know, status of the airport is different. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. What's the most difficult part in, in this, in the learning, learning process? I think landing is the most uh, landing. Di difficult part because you need to control the aircraft uh, very precisely uh, to make a good landing. Uh, for me, that's the uh, hardest part, actually. Mm. And once you get mm. through that, ev everything Everything's seems okay. Uh, seems okay. Right. There's a language, right, when you talk to the traffic control. <clears throat> Just like any profession, yeah. aviation has yeah. its own use of verbs Come on, and carry words. On. Good. And you carry on. Yeah. Let's, so let's hear. Let's hear. So you would call up the tower or ground control and say, Deer Valley Ground, Cessna 49 Tango Alpha, at Cushion Delta, taxi to active runway. Something simple like that, right? That's not simple. What, what actually did you say? <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and they get a lot, they glean a lot of information from that. They know what type of aircraft you are. Uh -huh. you're, you're not a Boeing, you're a little Cessna. You tell them where you're at but on that. But they see it from their radar? Typically, they can see you from the tower because yeah. you're at the airport and their tower is tall enough to see yes. you. And they're, they're, they're controlling you visually. They're typically looking at you, yeah. right? And then they will assign you a taxi route and the the clearance of which runway that you're that they want you to go to and there's keep in mind there's a lot of moving airplanes oh, yes. coming and going and traffic flow is their responsibility ground is they're keeping you safe from other operations they might call you back and say Cessna 49 Tango Alpha Deer Valley ground taxi to runway 25 right via Romeo 3 Charlie Charlie 11 hold short 25 left that's right. Wow. right. And again, <laughs> this so scares amazing. a lot of uh, students in the beginning, but once you learn the language See. and know how to communicate, it's actually yeah, it's, it's just it's like, fun. Now let's talk about something we can understand. Yeah, yeah. Are, you, are you curious about what's inside <laughs> that bag? I want to know what's inside their bag, the must-haves, yeah? yes. Pilot license. <laughs> Is there going to be police uh, checking in the air? Hey, where, where's your license? Oh, are you good? Can we see it? <laughs> sure. Medical uh, certificate. Uh, certificate. Yeah. 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 To make sure that to show that you're healthy enough. That's approval for me uh, that legally I can fly this plane. Mm. Right. You're yeah. required to keep that with you when with you're With you all operating. the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
What about item number two, if you need yeah, to Yeah, what else do you have? Logbooks. Logbooks, okay. A log book. books, yeah. So you write how long you fly? All you numbers. Write, all every, every one of those landings you every. were talking about, oh. you log those. Oh, yeah. and that's how you accumulate your hours, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> this is your, your whole career. Yeah. My career, yeah. His resume is right there. But wow. Just one of them. How many books have you accumulated now? Eight. That's how many flying hours? More than 15,000. Uh, 15, 15,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have flied for 24 years. Mm -hmm. You look young. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Okay. And Julie? And Julie, what do you have? Uh, my first thing will be EFB. It's called oh, electronic. <laughs> <laughs> games. <laughs> or playing games. <laughs> it's the electronic fl uh, flight bag. So all the chart and the everything just here. Which one is more helpful, uh, a digital version like this or the a paper? print copy? This one is better. And you also have a, a print copy ready uh, on the plane? or Depend on the company. My company still have the paper. It's called controlling. So the FAA required you still need to have the paper. But some airline totally got rid of it. It's that. all digital. Mm. All digital, yeah. Chandler? And Chandler, what do you have? Well, okay, let's start with... Uh, you have to have something to use when you're talking on the radio, so the headsets, headsets. they come in different shapes and sizes. There's going to be noise in the, in the cockpit because the engines are right there, and in the, in the airline it's a little quieter, mm -hmm. right? But this would be important to have, right, your headsets. Yeah. And then the second thing would be just a, an old-style kneeboard, knee board. right? So you strap this on as you're flying, oh, you strap it on keeping and... you very organized. Mm -hmm. You write down mm -hmm. some information that you're passing along or getting receiving from ATC. It mm -hmm. helps you keep organized. I was yeah. thinking family photos, you know, food. And, That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. At least something personal, right? Yeah. There is, it seems it's all about, it's all about, about work. work. It's all about work. <laughs> all work. Yeah. Boring pilots. Some pilots keep <laughs> the, a photo of their family, yeah. a portrait in, in, then, their, in their pilot hat. Yeah. You know what? That's cool. But I do have a cup for uh, water. <laughs> <laughs> Real water like this one, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's always fascinating to hear the captain talking to the passengers, right? You know, through your speakers. And can you talk a little bit, each one of you, just a little bit, you know? This is the captain speaking. And this is all, it's always cool to say that. Hey, this is Pat, captain speaking. I, I tried that in a little video. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it felt, it felt yeah, good. Yeah. Very, yeah. very impressive. <laughs> Welcome aboard China Eastern 5701 from Kunming to Beijing. The flight time will be around 2 hours and 45 minutes. And we'll be cruising at a flight level of 10,700 meters. And next, Captain number two is ready. Welcome to the Silver Airways, and we'll fly to the Bahamas, and from hot place to the hotter place. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So really enjoy your, your flight, and we'll mm. see you there. Your Thanks. Captain Talko, if you like. Um, well, we're going to take yeah. off on runway 25 left. We're going to climb up to 6,000 feet on takeoff. Make sure you have your seatbelt and shoulder harnesses mm -hmm. fastened. Um, if we have an engine failure on takeoff, I'm going to land straight ahead on the available runway. If there's no available runway, we're still landing straight ahead. <laughs> so something light. I don't want to scare our passengers, right? But in, in my operation, yeah, there's a, usually a passenger briefing that's not so much like the airlines are hearing yeah. the standard yeah. briefing, right? This is your captain speaking. is break time. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. And for more information on crossover... Please like us on Instagram and Facebook. This we'll is the right first back. office of talking. Welcome back to Crossover as we continue our talks about the aviation industry that is fast growing here in China. Well, there seems to be a, a phenomenon, uh, you know, because uh, whenever we fly, when the captain talks, it tends to be a guy, right? Yes. Is this the situation like in, in the industry now these days? We tend to ha have more male captains than uh, females? In the United States, it's also growing up very fast, the female pilot percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's a 6%. 6%? 6%. In the females. U.S.? In the U.S. And how about here in yeah. China? I think it's about 1%. 1%. That's 1%. Year, yeah. So it's still very, very small number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very small number. Mm -hmm. But now, nowadays, more girls are trying... Interested? Yeah, are trying to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So, okay. So we can have more, I, I believe, in the future. Physically, and is it more challenging to girls? I think that part is, since mm. I teach a lot of students, and statistically speaking, the guys have better mechanical feeling, but uh -huh. the girls really organize and manage very well, mm. which more is highly more need, needed. Yeah. More disciplined. Discipline, say. yeah, yeah. But do you need a lot of strength to maneuver the plane? We need to have the hand fly capability. Mm -hmm. So yeah. mm -hmm. I just experiencing the same training. We, I did a lot of hand flying. And you, you know, I can train, but some part, you, like yeah. row, you cannot train. Mm -hmm. Don't have time to train. You really have to physically fly the plane, uh -huh. especially recover from the emergency. You have to fly it. Mm. Yeah. So that's why I'm skinny, but I still try to build muscles. When you're, when you're <laughs> moving the flight controls, what's resisting, why it's hard, is there's a lot of aerodynamic force over the flight controls. Mm. And the more advanced the aircraft, you still will have some resistance. Another part of flight controls is on the feet with the rudders. And there's times when we're doing training for like VMC for yeah. twins, they'll, they'll, the instructor will uh, feather or uh, simulate an engine failure and the airplane will respond aerodynamically to that and the recovery from that is a lot of rudder pressure. Just like Julie was saying, a lot of flying isn't so much the physical skill, it's a lot of mental yes. ability. So mm -hmm. what they might lack in physical, they're making up in the mental mm -hmm. side of things. And the, the physical is limited. You don't have to be so strong to fly an airplane. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want a, a female to to preclude entering such a, a fun industry and a passion because she's worried that maybe she doesn't have the strength for it because yeah. obviously it, it's so possible. Skinny. If I yeah. can handle, girls can handle. Yeah. <laughs> the, the seats can be forward, right. uh, even adjusted up, yeah. you know, and most of the time your flying is very smooth and deliberate and there's not a whole lot of resistance. Right. Mm. But yeah, there, you're going to have simulated emergencies and some other things that will take a lot of, uh, yeah. of strength. Mm. Right. And we have a video from a female pilot here in China. Okay. So let's take a look. I 喜欢安静的摆弄洋娃娃一份很汉子的工作，我却非常的喜欢它，并一直坚持不懈地努力把它做到更好。现在的工作让我更加完整诠释儿时的梦想，更加热爱那座天空之城，更加热爱这片蓝天。So in her story, she had a dream of being a pilot, but she started as a flight attendant. Yeah. That's quite a detour, but she ended, anyway, in the end, eventually she made it come true for herself. Good for her. She's, Good for her. She looks still very yeah, young. She's very young. She's the first officer yeah. as well. Now, Julie, we know that you set a great example for female pilots. Mm. It's just uh, luckily, somehow, I set up a lot of record. I became a uh, first Asian woman to fly around the world. Mm. Wow. I became a first Chinese person to solo fly around the world. Mm. And I'm number nine uh, woman to solo navigation. You flew solo around the world. Can you yeah. share that experience with us? Yes, I prepared six years. How long did the entire trip It's take? about 165 hours. takes me 18 days. Wow. wow. And I really enjoyed it, especially when I crossed the ocean. I fly over the ocean, I was alone. And when I crossed the Atlantic Ocean, it's a night flight and no any reference and just mm -hmm. dark sky just and darkness, ocean eh? no yeah nothing there is it two seater a four seater uh, it is a four seater airplane but i have to remove the all, all the other seats put the ferry tank there 
to extend the range. What were you thinking when you were flying all this time? I mean, you're by yourself. You have no it's one all, to talk to. Yeah, it's all loneliness. Yeah, it's right? lonely. Yeah. Can you listen to music? I mean, did you did you have your iPad as a personal entertainment <laughs> device or not? I really focus. I didn't listen to any music. See. Fourteen hours without music. I have HF frequency. I have to talk. It's very difficult to talk. That.、Uh, High frequency radios doesn't work well,、mm -hmm. and sometimes I have to call the airline pilot to relay the information for me. Interesting. You can <laughs> you can find someone as an intermediary and then you can call someone the because you, using different it, frequency. It happens. We、yeah. talk to the I talk to the airline pilot by the very can high frequency. Can you can you、yeah. can you、uh, keep the message <laughs> send the message for me now? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> you you're five、uh, thousand meters higher than me. <laughs> okay, you have better signal over there. <laughs> you guys have you also thought about maybe one day you would do、Flying、things like that? Check out. Yeah, you flew to the channel. Had a chance. Maybe、yeah. when I was younger, I don't、yeah. know. <laughs> Fourteen yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I go、Never、to bed know, early know, these days. <laughs> things might happen.、Right? Wow. In terms of this profession, is it more difficult for Women, females? Yeah. yeah. I don't think that it is is difficult or or prolonged for a female. It's、mm. based on the numbers ahead of you. Right, it's、yeah. all about your seniority number. That's right. I don't know so much about the airline operations here in、oh. China, but、uh, in the U.S., yeah, you once you start at like the、yeah. regional level or even、uh, as a first officer for the majors, that's your number, and they will upgrade you to captain once you reach、uh, a certain、yeah. number, and the ones above you have moved、mm -hmm. on or, or retired, right? But in between, you're constantly being tested in proficiency and、yeah. retraining, and you know, so you have to do your part to to maintain skill sets.、Mm. But once the numbers above you move up, you can slide over. Coming back to the topic of today's、uh, edition of crossover, and this is really about the aviation future, especially general aviation, and、uh, with the easing of the policy,、uh, what do you foresee will happen? In China, in the future, in general aviation, we can expect more uh, uh, pilots. Actually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the、uh, whole industry,、uh, the development of the whole industry is uh, more uh, mainly restricted by the number of pilots and、mm. the number of airports. We don't have enough,、That's、but、right. there will be more. Yeah, there、mm -hmm. will be more. Mm. Mm. Okay, there will be a but, but congestion in the air <laughs> in the future. Yeah, but if the、um, aviation academies are not churning out pilots fast enough, does that mean that we'll have more foreign pilots? Like, what's the what's the plan?、Um, we could have more、um, foreign pilots,、mm -hmm. just like Shandao,、mm -hmm. right?、Mm -hmm. uh, that he's an example. He's Shanghai.、Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 He's from Shanghai. Yeah, he's not foreign. Yeah, he's not foreign. Yeah, he's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, the foreign one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, foreign. Yeah, foreign. <laughs> At the same time,、uh, we need to train. We need to train more、mm. pilots for on、yeah. our own. But、uh, pilot training is a very、uh, time-consuming and、uh, costly. Do we have any potential? <laughs> yes. Be honest. Yes. Yes. I like、yeah. your face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was a bit scared of the steep turn and 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 the drop, but um, <laughs> I, I do enjoy the thrill and yeah, I do enjoy. Yeah, you'll get used to it. Yeah, yeah. I do enjoy. Okay. You have, you, have a, you can see a beautiful scenery. We'll yeah, see. It's a lot of fun.、Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen in ten years' time? And thank you once again, Captain and future Captain. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining the show. Yeah, thank you for coming to Crossover and thank you thank for watching you. this edition of Crossover. We'll see you next time. All、bye. right, bye bye. How about earning 100,000 yuan a month by talking to your phone sounds to you? It won't be too surprising if you get to know how live stream apps go viral in China. Next week on Crossover, we talk about live stream business in China and those talented anchors who are making a fortune out of it.